I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. We have Steve, Steve joining us today. A little. Um, so Tom, do you want to uh, go ahead and take off on this since you and Steve have spoken? Yeah, we have. Steve, thank you for being on the show and you and I did a little bit of an interview uh, just not too long ago. You have an interesting encounter, and what I really enjoy about this one is the location. We're not going to give the exact spot out, but we'll say it's in Texas, East Texas, and Western Oklahoma. So take it from the beginning. Just kind of uh, tell us what you were doing that day and how you got to the point. And maybe I, I may interrupt once or twice with a question, but uh, let's, yeah. Let's hear your encounter. Okay. It it started, it was in November. It, I want to say it was, it was deer season, actually, here in Texas. I'm not sure about Oklahoma, but it was uh, snowing real, real heavy that day. We had three to four inches of snow on the ground, snowing big flakes. And I work in the oil field, so I was at the office. We all were on bad days like that. We usually just do paperwork and stay in the office, but I always tend to go out and run my route and just mainly look for deer tracks. <laughs> well, good. And, hey, quick question, Steve. Was Now, you yes, say sir. this is November. Was this just last November? No, sir. It had been roughly three years ago. Oh, okay. Still three, pretty current. Three, four years ago. Okay. So 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Yes, sir. Okay. So you're out driving around. Uh, or you're going to go drive around. Tell us a little bit about um, what your livelihood is and and what what that entails and how that okay. coincides with this. I'm a I'm a pumper in the oil field, and basically I'm assigned X amount of wells, and it's my responsibility to upkeep and maintain those wells. So. Every day, you're just basically running your route, getting your, your readings off your meters and troubleshooting, fixing any problems that might arise, just basically maintaining your wells. Okay, so, uh, and had just roughly, how many wells are you responsible for? Uh, right now, I've got 117 Oh wow, that's okay. How many yeah, how many wells day. would you Well, you can't possibly check all of those in one day, can you? No, sir. We split it up. Generally we try to make half of our route one day and finish up the second half the next day. And then the rest of the week you go back and fix any problems that you might find or routine maintenance things like that some of the wells oh, okay. have so contacts, you're jacked, some don't you know there's always something okay to... yeah all right so yeah excellent um so yeah go ahead and continue okay so this particular well i'm i'm headed to i i like going to that well because it's it's way out in the middle of nowhere and there's one way in one way out and there's opportunity to see a lot of wildlife so 
that's the the way I'm going. I'm going specifically to this well. And this well's right off a of, well, the lease road going to the well is off of a county road and it's that lease is shaped like a horseshoe, basically. Uh the top half of the horseshoe facing east, the dead ends of the horseshoe facing west. And I, uh, you enter right off the county road, on onto the lease road. the The county road dead ends about a half mile from that spot. So I turn in on the lease road to go around the the particular well I'm going to is on the south end of the horseshoe dead end. It's about that horseshoe shape lease road is probably a mile wide, a mile and a half wide, somewhere somewhere in that distance. And as I'm going down to check this well, I drop off a a little slight ridge. I always stop on top of that ridge and, and look across the whole bottom looking for deer, critters, anything of that nature. Well, it was snowing so hard that day that I I really couldn't see anything. So I drop down the ridge and continue on to my well. I get to my well. I check it. Everything's fine. I sat there for maybe a few minutes. And I, I go around my well, heading back out. And... I didn't write my readings down while I was at the well, and I keep my notebook on my dash. So I reach up on my dash to get my notebook as I'm driving, just real slow. And I notice something on the ridge in front of me, uh, something walking on two legs. And I think, what's a hunter doing way out here? As I grab my notebook, and I set my notebook against my steel, steering wheel, and I go to write my readings down. And in my mind, I'm thinking that's that's too big to be a person. That's not something. Something's not right. And I look back up at this figure walking on the on the ridge, and it's it's slumped over slightly. And it's it's walking in a zigzag pattern, like like back and forth walking. And the way it was walking, it it, it didn't look didn't look right to me. It didn't look. It, it wasn't walking like how we walk. In other words, right. We're going to kind of walk more or less in a straight line. So you said this thing is kind of going a zigzag. So, and he's on a, if I understand correctly, he's on a hill, but he's just below the crest. So you can't see his outline, but is he kind of going up and down, moving across the hill or? Yes, sir. He would be moving. I'm, I'm facing south, going south, and he's going to the east. And he's he's not on top of the ridge. He's not skylined. He's down probably 20, 30 foot from the top of the ridge on a little flat there. And he's walking towards the east in a zigzag pattern. And what what made me, what startled me, I guess, was not necessarily the size, the it was the thickness of this thing. It, it was it was too big to be a man. There there's there's no way. I knew I didn't know what I was looking at, but I knew it wasn't a man. It it wasn't a hunter. Uh it was all brown, kind of a kind of a, a khaki color I'd call it like a like a Carhartt coat cover color 
Uh, and its face, I, I couldn't, I could see the side profile kind of, of, of its face, but I couldn't, I couldn't make out no features. It, it was a different color than, than the body of this thing. And okay, I want to stop right there for a second. So you have some definition between the body of the creature, which is kind of uniform khaki, that Carhartt khaki color we know what we're talking about, and the face. Correct. Yeah. So you sir. get some definition on the face. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, that's interesting. And I I start easing towards it more and I'm, I'm riding the brake in my pickup and it, it it's continuing walking I mean not covering a lot of ground it's it's moving to the east and I'm going directly towards it now well when it gets to say 1130 from me my brake I, I pushed on my brakes to stop my truck and it made a, a squeak sound and as soon as that sound it wasn't real loud it, it was just a wet a wet brake sound and as soon as that happened this thing turned and looked right at me uh as I'm looking at it, I mean, there's a million things going through my mind, you know, trying to trying to make sense, trying to figure out what I'm, what it is, what it, what I'm actually looking at. And now I can definitely see the color of its face is uh, different than the color of the body. The face was kind of a kind of a light gray colored, like a firewood ash color, like a fire pit color. And it never stood straight upright. It was always in a bent over motion, not, not bent over, you know, a tremendous amount, but, but slightly slumped over. And it's looking at me, and I'm looking at it at probably maybe a little more than 200 yards, roughly. Pretty within rifle distance, I'd say. I mean, I 200 yards, roughly, maybe a little more. And it, it just freezes. And it's looking at me, and I'm looking at it. And for some reason, I took my eyes off of it just for a second. I, I don't remember what I'd done with the notebook on my lap. Maybe I was moving it, maybe just for a split second. Whenever I glance back up, now it's continuing east, but there's one tree on that ridge, and it's a mesquite tree. And I don't know if you all know about mesquite trees. They they're thorny, not not really big trees, just more like an overgrown bush with thorns. And it stops at that at that mesquite tree. It it squats down and it's facing me, and its right hand is grabbing the tree, the the trunk of the tree up, you know, about the middle of the tree, and and. Its arm, the the forearm part of the arm is longer than the than the bicep part of the arm. I I could see that, and we're just sitting there looking at each other. Well, as I start easing further towards it. Three deer come out of the bottom, and these were all three bucks, and they were running like 
deer run in two ways. I mean, when, when you startle them, they'll kind of scamper off a little bit. But these deer were running, neck stretched out, I mean, full tilt coming up that road in front of me. Uh, I'll never forget the look on the the white eyes of the deer. I mean, just like I could see the whites of the eyes, the mouth open, the tongue. I mean, these deer were were running like a bear was after them. Uh, when I when the deer come up and I took my eyes off of whatever I was looking at to to look at the deer. I put my eyes back to the mesquite tree where this creature was and it's walking away from me now. And I don't know the distance from that, from that tree to the, to the ridge line there, but it covered that distance. I remember in three steps, I, I, I could see the steps, three steps as it's, it's going away from me and it disappears over that ridge. And I continue in my truck going back the way I came in. And uh, I make it back to the county road and I'm continuing west down that county road trying to make sense of everything, what I'd just seen. And here come them same three deer that come up out of the bottom across in front of me again, still running, just wide-eyed, full, full tilt. And they cross the road in front of me again. And like I said, the distance from where I originally saw them to where I'm at now is probably a mile, a mile and a half as a crow flies. Rough, rough country. I mean, rough, hilly, rugged country and and I continue down that that road the county road to the dead end and then it you cross the cattle garden yeah you, you're on lease roads from that point on and I went to my next location probably a half mile away and I was pretty pretty sh- shook up and I called my foreman who has been a lifelong friend, hunting partner. We've we done everything outdoors together to tell him what I just saw or, you know, what had had just happened. And he had told me to stay there and he would come to me. So he came to me and I told him the story of what just happened and what I'd seen. And he wanted to go back and look for tracks. And I, I told him no that I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go back not without a gun. And he knew I was shook up. We'd known each other our whole lives, you know. We we'd been out in the woods together. We'd done everything together. And uh, we took off and went back to the office. And that that's about the story there. Let me ask you this: When the uh, from the time that you saw the deer, when you first saw them running the three bucks, and then you said you saw them again later on, what what kind of a time frame was that, and roughly the distance? Not very, not very long at all. I coming out of that location, I drove a little faster than I did going in. Right, right. <laughs> uh, uh, just a matter of of minutes if if that in the distance and you said it's pretty rough country there's r- ravines that yes, these things sir. have to go down and up and over i'm just trying to do speed yeah. time distance calculations in my head to think how fast these things are running they were as a crow flies it was probably a mile a mile and a half from where they crossed my road again and just like you said up and down rough rugged country I, i've hunted been a hunter all my life and mainly deer 
these deer were running. I mean, they had been running. The I, I mainly keyed in on the first one that that come up the ridge, and he had. I could just tell they'd been running for a while. They were. I mean, his tongue was out. I'll never forget how wide his eyes were. I, I've never seen that before. For some reason, that that stuck in my mind. And you associated their running. Uh, obviously, they're running. They're very scared. And you think that's because of the creature. It's associated with the creature, perhaps more of them, in this area. Is that is that correct? Or Yes, sir. The, the ridge that the the creature was on was above them the deer were below them and and do you think that would have been a good ambush point well not necessarily right there but from where i dropped off the ridge was a perfect ambush point there's a big cedar tree right there there's a lot of mosquitoes right there at the ridge and normally an animal's gonna take the path of least resistance when it's when it's running and at the top of that ridge on that leash road was a pinch point i mean it it would have been a perfect ambush spot for for a predator if i mean if i was hunting there herding the deer that's where i would sit to, to take them out has I, anybody else uh, – I, I apologize. I just want to ask real quick. Do you know if anybody else in the area – have you spoken with anybody else, uh, associates or friends or family, that have uh, reported or seen these creatures uh, either in this area or, or anywhere around around there? Well, there's always – every town's got a story you know, of, of a boogeyman or something to that nature. But nobody ever, I, I really didn't talk about it. I really, you know, I just told a handful of people about it. You know, my wife, my, my hunting partner, my best friend, and and my boss. But no, I've never, I've never really heard of any other sightings at, at that time after this incident all occurred i started researching i don't know why i uh i wanted to know what i what i'd witnessed what what i'd seen and i'd heard stories or heard a podcast about south of where i am back in the 50s 40s maybe that a farmer had shot one and buried it in a plum thicket because it kept messing with his livestock messing with his house but as you know that was just one of them old stories you know where did you hear that story was this from some of the locals or no it was on a podcast actually after, oh, after okay. Life, okay. I'd never thought of Bigfoot, really, or Sasquatch, or you know, you always hear the stories, Legend of Boggy Creek, all that, but it it never. I I never worried about it. I I just never thought about it until sure. then. And then after then, I got to to researching. You know, just trying to make sense of it all, I guess, trying to, because it, 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 it really bothered me, what I'd seen. You know, I've, I've been out in the woods all my life. I've hunted, I've fished ever since I could remember. And, and I've never been intimidated. You know, I've seen hogs, I've seen cougars, I've, I've, I've never been scared i guess you could say until that point and since that sighting i've i've not hunted one time i've not gone out in the woods at night i've not fished i've 
uh, that's because, yeah, because of this. Yeah, and it's because of this encounter, correct? Yes, sir. But because so of one of the things that yeah, absolutely. No, I understand. Uh, it's it it changes your perspective a hundred percent. And you had told me that you had uh, just kind of we talked about it a little bit earlier. You had several thousand dollars worth of hunting camping gear and it's just sitting in your garage now uh unused is that right yes sir and the boat and everything and it's i've not used it since i've uh i've bought a few more guns a few bigger guns since this incident <laughs> <laughs> right understandable <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, um and we talked a little bit also, I wanted to kind of do a comparison because when you saw the creature and then you, you became aware that it was aware of you and there's that moment when the two of you are, are aware of each other's, you know, it's, you, you now know that he knows that I know that, you know, that sort of thing. Um, how does that feel? What was kind of running through your mind at that moment and just kind of how are you feeling about that? It was, it was real, real troubling. Uh, like, like danger. Like I, I had a, an immediate sense of danger that, that I was, it never threatened me, never made a motion to me or anything, but I felt that it was, it was a danger to me. Uh, it was something that not necessarily, I wouldn't say evil, but something, something that, that scared me maybe kind of malevolent. Yeah. Like I wasn't the top dog anymore. You know, whatever and, the, and thing the comparison, was, I was beneath it. Yes. Yeah, that's almost like we're a lesser being in its uh, in its perspective. Um, the comparison that I was kind of looking for was briefly we spoke about you had been charged at one point um, by a hog, and I've always thought that that would just be terrifying to be charged by a wild hog because they're just you know they're just brutes and they're just going to tear you to pieces. Um, how would you compare that fear to the, the fear of seeing this creature? No comparison at all. I mean, when the hog was around me, sure, I was in danger, but it, it wasn't a fear. I, I, that, that fear feeling wasn't inside me. I mean, it ran me to my truck and put me up on my, the bed of my truck, but it, two totally different feelings. I've yeah, never since felt that before. I, I'd never felt it before. I've never felt it since then. That that fear. It, it, it's hard to explain the feeling. It's you know something's not right. You're well. It it. Re- yeah, and I think Will has a real good uh, term for that, and that is when you first see one of these things, it's outside of your frame of reference of what you're, you know, what we know, and it's almost as if this doesn't belong. Is that? Yeah, exactly. Okay, it kind of accurately you're, describes. You're looking at something that that's not supposed to exist. You know, and and you're trying to make sense of it. So you haven't been back hunting. You haven't done any fishing. Even if you get uh, your friend, your hunting friend, uh, would you consider going back and going hunting again? Or is it just completely something you, you've shelved for the time being? It's it's on the shelf. I'm, this year, I'm going to try to get out more when it warms up and, and start fishing more, I'll, I'll never go out unarmed ever again. 
Yeah, I, I can imagine. Well, um, a very interesting encounter. And to me, it's fascinating because of the location. And um, just really appreciate you taking the time to share this with us. Will, did you have any uh, comments or questions? I don't. It's really fascinating, Steve. You know, and, and you're right, there, there is no comparison uh, to having an encounter one of these creatures with anything, really. If there is, I've yet to, to, to find it. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost unnatural. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what a good, you're looking at is, is unnatural. That's a good description. The way they walk, the way they, they're, everything about it is just unnatural, or that's the sense that I got. Well, you hit it on the head. You know, you're looking at something that's not supposed to exist. And Will, we've talked about this. When you become aware that we're sharing our environment with an unknown hominid species mm -hmm. that we're completely unaware of, it's it's a little bit there's a whole lot of questions that come up and um so it's it's yep yep and and it's scary very much so and the questions come really fast i mean in your mind you, your eyes you know what you're seeing but you're you're trying to make sense of it all you know what? Yeah, it's not. and there's no information, right? And there's no back information that we have. There's no studies in school. There's nothing that you've seen on TV, per se, to really give you a good understanding of what the creature is and and where you fit in and where it fits in with us. It, it's really unsettling. I, you know, I hear people on these shows talk about they want to see one and they go out to look for them. And I'm just the opposite. I wish I'd never seen it. I mean, it's, it's affected me that, that much, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to see it. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't, you know, and, and what I've lost since then is just was a big part of my life. Essentially. I mean, I, lived in the woods and and now i i can't go out you know I, I can't go back out well completely understand and uh will we have a saying about that and i think that's applicable to steve's encounter is we're going to go to where they're not <laughs> right and there really isn't any place like that <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I I think there's a lot more out there than than people think. Yeah, absolutely. Steve, listen, stay in touch, and uh, really appreciate the time you took to uh, share your encounter with us. If you get any any more information, any encounters, just uh, you, you know how to get a hold of us. Shoot me an email, and. Uh, Really appreciate your time tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Yes, yeah, Steve. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.